my mic on? Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Because I can't hear. OK, great. Um, that works really well because I can't see you. Um, anyway, so the first letter on this repository link here is a T. I will share it again. I also tweeted it out. Um, my name is Katherine Mead. I work at a company called Sparkbox. I'm a full stack developer, or whatever that means. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. Um, Sparkbox is a little web shop in Ohio. We have about 40 people. I spend most of my time working on an enterprise level design system. Um, you can ask me about later. So today I'm going to share with you a few tools and techniques to make your pull requests more effective and more collaborative. Uh, because of time, I hope to do a quick summary of a few tools, and you can Google them later after the event. Um, most of these tools are not GitHub exclusive, so I've met people from GitLab and Bitbucket here, and I know there's at least one GitHub person. Um, so hopefully, like, you still find something even if GitHub is not your main technology. To start, I should share a bit about context and how Sparkbox does code reviews. Um, we steer nor store nearly all of our code on GitHub. We do have one Bitbucket client now. Um, that's kind of new. Um, we use shared repositories dedicated to whatever engagement we're working on. Uh, developers have, whenever developers have new code to add to the project, um, they ask another developer for a code review uh, via a pull request. Uh, I've come up with six sort of rules that Sparkbox adheres to while using GitHub, and I will just say that I came up with these rules um, for the Sparkbox process, so I do not represent the thoughts and ideas of my employer. <laughs> um, rule number one is no one merges their own code. Um, Sparkbox likes to avoid the concept of a developer island, where one developer is writing and merging all of the code for a piece of a website. Last year, we had a client who wanted an additional full-time developer for a side project, but they would be the only developer on that project. Um, we offered instead two developers at half time. Having a reviewer is that important to us. The second rule is never push directly to master. Pushing directly to master is the easiest way to break everything. Uh, requiring a code review re reinforces the quality that we've come to value as a company. Uh, Third rule, if you're working with UI, get a design review. Um, at Sparkbox, we have a position called a front-end designer. Uh, on every project we design, this special designer often will write front-end code, so they may do some CSS. Um, but not every company has designers who know how to code, and nor should they, um, but that's probably a different talk. Rule number four, if you are working on copy, um, get, a, get a copy review at Sparkbox. This is usually the project manager or the client themselves. Um, we have an integrated uh, development process, so the clients usually have access to the repositories we're working on. Rule number five is never, ever push directly to master. Again, <laughs> uh, unless you messed up, which if you did, find a buddy to pair with. Uh, which leads me to rule number six, which is these rules are more like guidelines. Uh, and I made them up. <laughs> but if you follow these six rules, it ensures that we follow the basic Sparkbox pre creed, which is working together for a web built right. If every piece of code has at least two people contributing to it, we often catch mistakes before they happen. So all of that is context for about to, what I'm about to talk about. Um, it may be different for you and your company. It's just how we like to work. So I'm not telling you how you should do code reviews. Um, some challenges of collaboration are getting a PR review from a non-coder or getting a PR review from someone who is in a different time zone. Currently, I am five hours separate from most of my team and nine hours separated from the rest. It's not that easy. <laughs> working with developers who may be only doing reviews on your project or working with um, people who are assigned directly um, to PR review and nothing else. So how, how do we improve these things? So I'm going to give you six steps, I think. I guess I like the number six. Um, tip number one is write good stories. To ensure good pull requests, we have to write good issues. At Sparkbox, we often use Zen Hub, GitHub Projects, Jira, or Trello to organize engagements, usually with something like Scrum. Um, which involves creating stories, which is usually a GitHub issue, representing a bite-sized chunk of work. So let's hope these pictures work right. All right. Uh, stories should include the requirements of the work and potentially a solution if you have one in mind. 
A uh, story or issue doesn't need to be overly complicated, but it should be easy to understand. A well-written story makes for clear requirements when it comes time to do a PR. And this leads you to my very first tool recommendation. Um, the only one that is GitHub exclusive, but I'm sure there's something similar on the other technologies. Um, just for reference in the photo, this is my coworker Austin, who is a project manager, um, explaining that there, this footer is not great, so maybe we can use some of these other colors instead. So GitHub issue, and GitHub issue templates and PR templates uh, allow you to add a markdown file to your root directory uh, to outline the issue process. I'll share this link again in a minute. Uh, this is an issue template. Here's my markdown. It's included directly in my project. Um, button. <laughs> in addition to adding the template file to the root of your project, you can also include it via .github directory. Um, PR templates are also a thing that can go in this directory. They work the same way, but have a different file name, and they come up when you do a PR instead of an issue. So here is the issue template on GitHub. When I click the new issue button, the text field populates with the contents of the template file. And then these example files are stored in the repo I linked at the beginning, and I tweeted out, and I'll link at the end, I think, <laughs> if you want to take a closer look. Talk with your project team to decide what you should put into a template. Mine is just an example. It's a very flat example. Um, but a checklist is usually nice. You can go through and click things off. So there's that link again. I'll give you about 30 seconds, three seconds, two seconds. All right. <laughs> Tip number two is get the basics right. A good way to frustrate your pull request reviewer is to send them something with absolutely no context. You could respond in kind. These are real, real PRs, people. <laughs> From my coworkers, they're great. Um, but a few extra minutes to write a thoughtful PR description can go a long way toward easing the work of the reviewer. Uh, we try to include a quick summary of the work being done, uh, usually matching your commit descriptions. A uh, link to any GitHub issues or stories, especially use it if you're using something like ZenHub or Jira for Agile. A link or screenshot of the original design work if you're working on UI. As a developer, I love screenshots in addition to design files because I don't have to open up Zeppelin every single time I'm looking at something to build. Um, and step-by-step -step testing instructions, including how to run the linter or how to run the tests. Uh, how to navigate to any new work, how specifically your new work is meant to function. So here's that PR example again. This is from my other coworker, Brian. Uh, he's hit a number of these um, tips. Um, they should be written in the context of the, the developer reviewing the work. For example, a PR to a developer who is only doing review or QA may look completely different to the one who wrote the build process. All right. Next tip, enhance your pull request with GIF. This is my favorite GIF because it's a cat and the cat is coding. My name is Cat and I'm a coder. Um, so it's me. <laughs> I hope you like that joke. It's my only one. Um, <laughs> uh, so what if a GIF can be more than a quick laugh? GIFs are awesome for showing nav functionality, transitions, hover effects, animations, pretty much any visual aspect of your work. We're a front end shop, can you tell? <laughs> GIFs are especially useful for getting a design review of an animation or hover from someone who may not have the site running locally. Um, here is my tool for this one. It's called Recordit. Um, there's the link. It's recordit.co. Recordit is a screencasting service that lets you save your finished recording as a GIF and even gives you a hosted link. Um, an example use case is Foundry, which is a Sparkbox blog. Um, the CMS that this foundry is built upon is a really big deal to set up. It may take a full day, especially if it's for a designer or project manager who's just trying to review one or two lines of code or content. By including a GIF, you may give the necessary context and allow everyone to feel confident in what they are approving. Um, so this is just a GIF I made of some functionality. So here's the link to record it again. Uh, a downside to record it is that it doesn't currently support HTTPS, um, which means, as you may know, that it can't be embedded directly into a PR on GitHub. Um, it can still be sent as a Slack link or just in an email or whatever. 
An alternative, I've recently discovered GIFOX. Um, GIFOX is a native app. It creates GIFs, and you can drop them into GitHub to host them just like you would an image. Um, hosting on GitHub gives you the full security of your repository, so you're not violating your security policies. Um, it does cost $5. Wow, this one's really off. Um, <laughs> Uh, include, it is included in set app if you're a set app subscriber, and I think this one only works on Mac, but there are lots of GIFing tools out there. It's sort of the thought that counts. All right. The next one is enhancing your pull request with video. Uh, an important aspect of a complicated PR is the ability to walk someone through your code. In the current age, devs are often distributed or remote. We work in different time zones and have busy schedules. Sometimes it is nearly impossible to schedule the 30 minutes to step through your PR. Here's the tool. <laughs> uh, it's Go Video by Video Vidyard. This used to be called Viewdit. They changed it right after I wrote my talk, so I had to change it. <laughs> um, Go Video is a Chrome extension. They also have a native app um, because not everyone is a fan of Chrome. Hello, Mozilla. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go video lets a user record their screen, their face, and their voice all at once. Uh, specifically, we used a video project like this on an engagement where the main reviewer, me, uh, was not dedicated to the project full time. Because I was not available for stand ups, I didn't have a direct hand in building the website, and I wasn't really familiar with the changes being reviewed, the dev had to explain every change for every PR. Go video is one of my new favorite ways to start a code review. I've made you a video instead of showing you how it's done. Um, hopefully it works. I keep meaning to re-record this, but people tell me that awkwardness is endearing. So just, just go with it. Hey there, GitHubbers. This is Go Video by Vidyard. As you can see, it records my entire screen, plus a little me down in the corner over here. Hello. Um, <laughs> that I think is super friendly and great for doing video walkthroughs of pull requests. Here you can see that I am on a pull request and I can go into my file changes. Uh, I can look at the code. I can explain, hey, this class adds 3M of padding bottom to our Sparkbox homepage. It hopefully fixes an issue. Uh, I hope you like it. Please merge it. Obviously, I did merge it because this is me. Um, <laughs> And then when you are done recording your video, you can go on to a screen. Uh, one shows up like this. You can see that you can change your title, like Cat is super great at videos. Um, you should try it sometime. It's not that great. <laughs> Just kidding, that's a bad joke. Uh, so you can change your thumbnail, sort of scrub through contents. And when you're done, you get a link right here. Um, that link is HTTPS, so you can embed it directly into your pull request, and whoever wants to review your code gets a nice, friendly walkthrough, and it doesn't matter about time zones or anything fun like that. All right, never again. <laughs> Thanks. That's really encouraging. So here's the link again. Uh, depending on the size of your PR, a walkthrough video only adds about five or 10 minutes total to our setup time, but it can potentially save the 30 to 60 minutes it might take to explain your PR via the Slack or email, I'm sorry, um, or scheduling a Zoom meeting. <laughs> um, this is especially useful when pairing developers who have different schedules um, for who are remote or who are not as familiar with the engagement you're working on. All right, two more tips. There's another give valuable feedback, Skitch. Skitch is a free app. We're going directly into the tool here. <laughs> Skitch is a free app from Evernote. It's probably my favorite thing on all of these slides. It is loved by Sparkbox for everything from full page decomps to quick design edits to making memes of your coworkers. I use it daily. Here um, is an example. I just made this up. Skitch provides elegant markup tools for drawing boxes, adding arrows, and highlighting any necessary changes. You can just take a screenshot and have at it. That's Shift Command 4 on a Mac. It took me a really long time to learn that, so now you don't have to pretend you didn't know. Um, <laughs> so here are some real world examples. I pulled these directly out of Slack. Um, I'm just going to go through them. Oh, that one doesn't work. Here's some muscles. This is the best joke in my slides, and it's not even mine. <laughs> All 
All right, so that's Sketch by Evernote. Um, you can just Google Sketch. You don't have to remember this whole link. Sketch works well in the opposite direction of Record It. It's an easy way for designers to communicate desired changes with developers. Um, say, make this bigger, reduce the space here, delete this link. Uh, Sketch provides visual feedback for visual thinkers. All right, last one. Uh, one last way to make your PRs friendlier is to be friendly. Uh, spat via GitHub comments is no way to collaborate. And let's face it, we know communication is very difficult in text. It doesn't communicate tone. That's why we invent an emoji. <laughs> a coworker of mine, Brian, the one who wrote the really awesome PR earlier, um, also wrote an article about this topic. It's called Stop Giving Depressing Code Reviews. Um, <laughs> the idea is to give as much possible positive code feedback as you do correction. It's really hard, especially if you're an INTJ like me. You just go through and see all the negative, and you don't offer any positive comments. Um, but you can do it. So this is a picture of Brian. He knows I'm including it. <laughs> um, instead of really going to this topic, I'm going to read you this quote. It says, giving positive feedback is an easy habit to adopt. You're already reading through the lines of code, looking for issues. It doesn't take much night. It doesn't take much time to throw in a nice or looks great. If you see something awesome, say it. Um, so the link to the full article is there. But a few positive comments make a huge difference in the overall tone of your review. Whether you're speaking with diviner, designers, developers, other team contributors, clients, which are really important. Um, so yeah, be nice. And that's, that's what I have. Hopefully, at least one of these tools can make the PR experience more accessible for your entire team and not just the developers. With healthy dose of empathy, we can improve the way our coworkers review the code we write. And as a result, we create smoother workflows, increase both speed and communication, and make better websites. If you want to hear more about Sparkbox or the design system I'm building, please come find me. I have decals and some business cards that look like ninja stars um, up here at the front desk. And that's it. <laughs>